What's up guys? Um, today's video we're gonna just be talking about when you don't feel on fire for God. Um, guys, this happens to every believer at some point or another, and it's usually not a very fun feeling. Um, th this video is gonna be kind of scripture heavy. I'm gonna go over a few scriptures. Um, but yeah, if you're going through that season, right, you just don't feel on fire for God, you wake up and you're like, oh, like I just don't wanna read my Bible, I don't wanna talk to God. I just want to, I want to do me things. I want to do me right now. Right. Totally normal. Totally normal. Um, but we got to ask the question, right? Does that mean we stop following our biblical practices? Does that mean that God's far from us? Does that mean that we just give up the faith? Right. Well, what, what does that mean? Some of you guys are probably like, okay, obviously not. But the answer to all those is no, right? We, we keep on remaining steadfast. We keep on practicing the good habits um, as Christians, right? We don't want to force ourselves to read the Bible 40 chapters a day, right? But get in the Word, right? I mean, Jesus speaks to us through the Word of God, right? So we don't want to lose that, 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 that form of communication, right? Of course, God doesn't just talk to us through that. He talks to us through others. He, he can speak directly to us, audibly or not audibly. Um, but, you know, I, I would say I, I wouldn't personally want to give up one method of communication with Jesus, right? Especially when I'm not on fire for him. If he can still talk to me and I can still be able to fan that flame and keep um, keep, keep something there um, on my end, I would highly recommend it, right? So the first verse I want to read is 1 Corinthians 15, 58. It says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, right? That word steadfast, right? immovable we want to keep on going even when we don't feel like it right think about it when you have a job right even if you hate the job right you got bills to pay so you're going to continue showing up to that job you're going to continue going to work you're going to there, there's a sense of steadfastness um because you want to be able to you know keep the lights on keep the water going right not to compare our relationship with god to work um, but that's an analogy I want to use, right? Because any relationship in our lives, it takes some work. It takes some effort, right? Right. Think about it. Uh, relationship. You got it. You got a little honey, right? You got honey. A husband, a wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, um, even just a friendship, right? If you want to keep that alive, you're going to continue nurturing it, right? You're going to spend time with that person. You're going to do things they like. You're going to, you know, know their voice, hear their voice do things to please them, right? Same thing with this relationship with God. We want to be steadfast, immovable always, right? No matter what, man, our circumstances can make us feel like our relationship with God sucks. Our circumstances can make um, can make it seem like God's not there, but that's just not true at all. That's not true at all. He's always there. God's the same yesterday, today, and forever, right? So we want to continue to have those steadfast moments, those immovable times where even when it seems like on paper we should be, you know, maybe taking a break from God or whatever it is. No, no, no. We, the Bible says to be steadfast, right? Knowing that the labor is not in vain, right? We're going to keep on working for the Lord. We're going to keep on nurturing that relationship, keeping it alive. Um, and not that it could die because it can't, but you know what I'm saying? Keeping it, keeping it spicy, keeping it alive, keeping it vibrant, right? Um, and that's not to say that you could be doing all the right things, so to speak. And your relationship with God still maybe feels a little dull or whatever. If that happens, that's a normal season. Um, but that doesn't mean to quit. That means to keep on going. Um, I want to read Hebrews 12, 1 through 2. It says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith bars right super cool um a couple things to kind of point out there right it says let us throw off everything that hinders right so maybe just maybe the reason we're not feeling as close to god maybe the fire isn't there because we've replaced it with something else right right think about it every time you get something new you're in love with it oh i love it i got a new car i'm obsessed right whatever it is but then after some time well it doesn't it's not as great as i maybe thought it was I mean, it's got this issue, it's got that issue. The new one already came out, um, right? That, that's, our, that's our nature, right? We always want more, we always want better. We get tired, our attention spans are low. Um, so maybe there's something there that is hindering us, right? 
Maybe they, maybe it's that new car, maybe it's the iPhone, maybe it's, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend. What are we idolizing in our life? If we need to take, we, we, we need to take inventory and think what in our lives could be hindering our relationship with God, right? And sometimes it's like, ah, they can coexist. Yeah, I think so. I think they can coexist. I think you have to have boundaries. You have to limit. You have to um, set certain parameters in place to have Jesus, you know, maintain your priority. Because it's hard, man. It's hard in a world where there's so many material things at our fingertips. We go to the store. We, could, we don't even got to go to the store, bro. Amazon, boom. It's at our doorstep. We're lazy and we can get whatever we want. Right? So take inventory, man. What could be hindering? And then the second part of that, is, it says, and the sin that so easily entangles us. Maybe it's a sin, man. Right? Sin, oh, sin sucks. And we all do it. We're all sinners. But think about it. Think about what sin does, right? Sin makes us feel like crap a lot of the times, right? And God doesn't want us to feel shame, right? He wants us to feel that conviction so we can turn around, but he doesn't want us to feel shame. God is not a God that shames us. But it often makes us feel shame, right? And so then we feel like we can't approach God or we feel like God's left because he's mad, right? What else does sin do? Well, sin sin, sin puts chains on us. Sin puts us in shackles, right? And it makes us feel like a prisoner and a slave to these things. Which then that becomes the the focal point of our mind, right? We can all we can think about is the addiction. All we can think about is, you know, the issue, right? It's really easy to see the the one stain on a nice T-shirt, but sometimes it's hard to see the beauty in it, regardless of that one stain, right? Because we all have stains. But sin, we can address sin. We can address sin. Any addiction, anything like that, it can be gone. I mean, people will be like, "No, you're just addicted. It's you're kind of stuck in." No, no, what? Not even from a Christian standpoint, but from a standpoint of, you know, wanting to better yourself. You're not bound by that. You're strong, right? And as Christians, right, Jesus is that strength for us too, right? Jesus Jesus can be strong for us, right? I mean, he died to wipe it out. You think he wiped out our sin forever? You think he can't just help us in the world real quick, just kind of like, you know, get over the sin? Not to minimize it, but come on. It's Jesus we're talking about. It's God. Um, so sin, right? Sin easily entangles us. Maybe that could be the reason you don't feel on fire for God. Um, because we're punishing ourselves through sin, right? And that creates distance. Sin creates distance with God. God didn't do anything. God's not mad and he's leaving. We're choosing sin over him and that's creating that gap, right? So sin and anything that hinders, right? We want to, it says throw off everything, right? I think throw off, that, that's kind of a cool, I'm glad they use that word instead of try to stop or leave sin behind you know what i mean it's throw off man like think about it if there's like a big cockroach or something on your back you're throwing that crap off if there's something like think about it throw it off throw it aggressively get rid of it right don't just oh i tried yeah you know what we're gonna say i tried a lot because we're not perfect but come at it with an approach of i'm throwing this crap off right i'm not letting anything get between me and god even when i feel like uh i don't know i'm kind of just enjoying it i know it's hindering my relationship with god but they can coexist if you're if you're you know comparing it and it's on that pedestal right next to god you gotta you gotta be wary of it man you don't want anything to come close to god god shouldn't be on the pedestal because he should be above it so anything that could be threatening you know the number one priority and the idol in your life that is god throw it off man minimize it at least right you want you want to get that crap in check and if you you like oh i don't have anything like that I'd encourage you to write some things down. What do you spend your most time doing? What do you spend the most money on? Things like that. And just kind of look at it. And, and it might not be an idol, but, you know, if you write it down, you think about it, you might think, well, you know what? Now that I think about it, yeah, it kind of is, right? And sometimes it's hard to get rid of those things. I'd suggest talking to somebody, making a plan. Um, but yeah, not feeling on fire for God sucks. So is it really worth that? Right? I'd say nothing's worth necessarily getting rid of that fire. I always want more of God. That's just me. But um, I, I hope that's you as well. Um, another scripture I want to read, Ephesians 6, 10 through 11. It says, Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Armor of God. I did a video on, armor of the, on the armor of God, so be sure to check that out. But it says the end, so that you may be able to stand against, right? Stand against the devil. The devil could be part of the reason we're not feeling necessarily on fire for God, right? He's a deceiver. He, it starts to thwart and kind of 
twist certain ideas we have about God, certain, right? Oh, well, I didn't get the job I wanted, so God must be mad. Or I didn't get the job, so maybe God's not real. I didn't. So we start to have almost like animosity towards God because the devil's tricking us, right? And maybe you're like, okay, yeah, right, whatever. I would never let the devil get in between. No, I, I know you wouldn't. I know you wouldn't let the devil get in between. But but he doesn't listen to your rules. You know, he's not going to be like, oh, they don't want it to. All right, on to the next one. No, it's not. He, he'll do anything in his power to bring you down with him. Right? Because he's already going down, so he's got nothing to lose. So putting on the armor of God. Right? I want you guys to check out that video. Um, it's just kind of an informative video. It goes over the scripture and what the pieces are. Um, but guys... We need to fight the devil, man, and get rid of anything that could be a distraction. Um, we're we're going to go through seasons where we don't feel on fire for God. And even if we, you know, take these precautions, right, throw off sin, throw off anything that's hindering us, right? We, we acknowledge um, what the devil could be doing and we fight against that with the armor of God, right? It's remaining steadfast in the Lord. We still could have times where we just don't feel on fire for God. But I encourage you, continue to read your Bible. Continue to be in community. Being in community is huge, man. I could say, at least for me, when I'm not in community with other believers is when my faith tanks the hardest. Um, disciple isn't meant to be done alone, right? Jesus even had 12 disciples. He didn't do it alone. He could have, but he didn't, right? Um, the church. Why do you think there's such emphasis on the church, right, in the New Testament? Being a, the body of Christ, not just, I'm, I'm going to do my own thing, right? No. No, you look at, I mean, Paul, these guys had apprentices. They had people that they were discipling, right? We want to have people pouring into us and we want to be pouring into people. So get in community, read your Bible, pray. Just be like, God, I don't feel like reading my Bible. God, I don't even feel like talking to you. God, I don't even know if you're listening. But have those conversations. God knows our heart. God understands our heart. But making an effort is very important to God, right? And you never know what God can show you when you say, God, I don't know what else to do. I don't feel you. I don't want to read my Bible. I just want to go do my own thing. But God, I'm here if you have anything to say, right? Simple prayer, man. Lord, give me ears to hear and eyes to see, right? And God can do it. God can do it. Not always going to fill on fire for God, but we can do our part to, to try to fan that flame, keep the fire alive. Um, and even if after all that, we still feel the same, it's good to know that God is still the same, right? God's not distant from us, right? That one song, Chris Renzema, you're still just as good. Listen to that song. Oh, it's such a good song. But guys, that's my encouragement for you. Um, if you guys have anything to add um, or want to just share something that could help in the comments, be sure to do it. Guys, we're a community here. I want this to feel like a family. I want you guys to feel comfortable. And I want us to get to know each other, right? In the comments, you see somebody that commented before, befriend them, be friends with them. Um, guys, we need to encourage each other as believers. It's hard in the world we live in to, to stay focused all the time. And, you know, we're going to fall off like here and there. We're going to mess up which is you know it's natural it's the human condition but um keep on fighting the good fight guys um, remain steadfast jesus hasn't left you jesus loves you and uh continue to chase after him more than anything else um love you guys jesus loves you see you next video latest skaters